for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday morning, July the 11th, 1999. Final service of the Summer Family Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds. We've had uh, uh, considerable teaching by many teachers. And so this morning for a few minutes, I'm just going to uh, review a little of... of uh, where we're going, for this week we've had uh, much teaching about deliverance and about the kingdom. And uh, we've been blessed to, to have uh, uh, several. Tommy Cook, he taught on, uh, on uh, spiritual blemishes and the sealing of the saints, and one like unto the Son of Man. And uh, each, each teaching was a, was a wonderful teaching and, uh, uh, of its own. And uh, uh, Tommy is, a, is really a teacher of teachers. Uh, he, he is, the Lord has gifted him with a ministry of teaching and a prophetic ministry and a, and a, a ministry of deliverance. Uh, of course, Tommy didn't know anything about deliverance when I uh, when, uh, uh, brought him here about 18, 15 or 18 years ago. He was, he was in great need of deliverance. He was uh, in, the, in the middle of a nervous breakdown from problems that had happened uh, in the ministry. And uh, the Lord brought him here and brought great deliverance to him and then has taught him also to be a deliverance ministry along with the prophetic ministry and the teaching ministry because they all go together. They're all, it's all one ministry. It's all one. And then uh, uh, Chris Simpson from uh, down in Pasadena, Texas, uh, taught us on the seven roots of, uh, uh, of uh, relationship problems. The seven roots of relationship problems. And, uh, and, and then he taught us on why did God put that person in my life. And sometimes that's, we, we all come across that from time to time and wonder, Lord, why did you put that person in my life? And uh, when he got through with it, why we kind of, could understand that it was for our own teaching as well as for the benefit of the uh, of those others as well. Uh, then uh, Dr. Null here, uh, the Lord uh, has been let him uh, come and be with us uh, for uh, for many many years. It's a hardship sometimes for him to be here because uh, to arrange with the other doctors to get uh, relief from the from the clinic there in Salina, Kansas, so he can be here. You know, to come here to all these meetings and to be responsible to a, uh, to a, a practice and, uh, and your patients and the other uh, doctors uh, is quite a chore. Uh, but uh, the Lord has blessed him with favor with the other doctors so he can be here to teach us. And Dr. Null, the Lord has given him a, a wonderful ability of teaching and, and, uh, and of deliverance. Uh, his, uh, he taught us to begin with... Uh, on the basic uh, uh, principles of deliverance. Dr. Nell taught, taught us the basic principles of deliverance. And uh, that is a very needed subject, really. Uh, we forget sometimes that a lot of people come in, and uh, of course we've been around for so long, that we forget that really they don't understand some, uh, some of the things of deliverance. And so uh, the Lord showed that to Dr. Nell, and he, he taught us on the basic principles of deliverance. And then... He taught us on laying down your soul life, what I want. Give it over to the Lord. And, and if we really come to a place of sonship, really, there will be nothing that you desire more than Jesus. Because everything belongs to Jesus. Nothing belongs to you. You can claim it. But sometimes you claim it to your own hurt. You claim it to your own hurt. Uh, so uh, uh, he, he taught us on laying down... Our, our self, our soul life. And then he taught on counterfeit spirits. My, there's a, there's a multitude of counterfeit spirits in the world today. They're everywhere. They're, they're, they're counterfeit 
of everything of God, Satan has a counterfeit for it. And we have to be very careful sometimes that we're not delusioned by the counterfeit and believe it to be the, the, uh, uh, the real. Uh, well, that, there's another word, but I can't think of it. Genuine. That's what I want. That, that, that the counterfeit sometimes is so close to the real that we think it is the genuine. And we've got to be, uh, have discernment and be very careful uh, that we don't get taken up uh, with uh, things that are, uh, that are not so. Uh, and, and also, we need to, uh, to uh, ask the Lord and thank the Lord for showing us the error of our traditions. We all have traditions that we've learned through our background. And a lot of the traditions are not biblical. But we are not aware of that. We think because we've been taught it this way and this way that it's, that it's biblical. But we need to search out for myself so that I know that I know that I know that it is the Word of God. And it's not, it's not twisted or, or sideways some way or misquoted uh, so that we are believing in an error instead of truth. Lord, help us that our, be, that our understanding will be the truth and not error. And wherever we're, we're, our traditions are, we've been brought into error, help us to, to be quick to admit it and to change. Some things of error are hard, very hard for, for us to change. Very hard for us to change. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll make a remark about one here, about uh, uh, one of the errors that we have been taught. Uh, through our tradition, uh, uh, which, uh, anyway, uh, then, then George Wingate taught us, uh, where, where are we in Christ? Where, what is our position, our place in Christ? Where, where are we in Christ? And, and uh, to be doers of the Word. Where are we in Christ? He taught us, and he taught us to be doers of the Word. Not just listen to it, not just read it, and, and, uh, but to do it to do the Word, that it will be uh, flow out through us, uh, and, we'll, and we'll be doers of the Word, and not just he hearers only. Uh, and that, that, uh, that we all n need to do. Then, Brother John Fletcher, uh, uh, he taught us uh, on the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ relating to you and me, how, how the, law, the life of the Lord Jesus should relate to each one of us. And... Uh, uh, and then he taught us about uh, deceiving ourselves. Well, in a way, that is also uh, the, uh, uh, the being aware of false doctrine and false teachings so that we're not deceived, he, about de deceiving ourselves. And then uh, Glacella from the Philippines, she brought us that wonderful uh, uh, report to, of the labors in the Philippines and in uh, and in. Uh, 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 Vietnam, uh, and how the Lord is moving and working there, and how uh, how there's a uh, an outpouring of the Lord even in the places where where there's uh, where they're forbidden to serve the Lord. Uh, uh, she uh, uh, is being able to go in there and minister and bring the word of the Lord into Vietnam and there in in Manila. And then Jean Moody brought us on taught us on. Uh, the change of our life, to ch that, that deliverance will change our life. And those, uh, those of, of us who have been around and seen uh, very long in the deliverance ministry, we have seen lives completely reversed and changed by, the deliverance, uh, by deliverance through the, and by the name of Jesus. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men may be saved or delivered except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a changing thing. And then he taught us on schizophrenia, a double, a double personality. Right. Yeah. Uh, the crisis in our life, too, that we live to. For. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then, then Mildred. Let's get Mildred. Uh, coffee. She, she, she taught us uh, the curses about curses that need to be broken in our lives. Curses that we've come under because of what we have done. Curses that we're that we're under because of of our ancestral heritage, the curses of uh, the occult and and not serving God. These curses bring a, a four generation curse, and then the curses of of sexual sins and and uh, in that area come under a ten generation curse. 
And I'm of the opinion that in even four generations, we are under all of these curses. I know in ten generations, back there somewhere in ten generations, some of our ancestors have been warmongers, murderers, adulterers, fornicators, uh, uh, incest, uh, uh, anything you can name has taken place in, in a ten generation, approximately 400 year uh, period of time in our, in our, in our uh, background, our history. So we need to, to understand these areas and be able to bring them to the Lord and through the blood and the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus, break the curses and set the end and set the captives free, including ourselves. Including ourselves. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and then she taught, lastly, on uh, 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 he sent his word and healed them. And Jesus said, uh, said that, that he gave us authority uh, to, to cast out devils, to heal the sick and to raise the dead. That's what he said. He said he gave us that authority. So he has, and it says that he sent his word and healed them all. And so we stand and declare and, and trust that, that as we pray for people, that the healing virtue by the scars and stripes of the whipping post, that the healing virtue will flow through. For it is written in Isaiah 53 and 5 that by his stripes I am healed. Amen. And I de we decree that in Jesus' name for each one of us. And Lord, increase my faith. Help mine unbelief, Father, that I can believe, that I can believe you, your word and appropriate and apply it to my life and to the life of those who come, that we come in contact with. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So, uh, that is a review of the services this week. So now let's also look in, in the word for a bit and review some of, of what uh, we heard, we have uh, uh, been taught by the Word, and then we will uh, go. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, and uh, we will begin there in Deuteronomy 28, and verse 58 is where I want to begin. And it says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, what is the law? What is the book? This is the book, and this is the law. All the words that are written in this book, that is the law. And he says, If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear or reverence or honor this glorious and the fearful name of the Lord thy God, and, and Jesus is his name, then... The Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, or many, and the plagues of thy seed even very great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness. And you notice it's repeated. And, and long continuance. The Lord repeats that. That is not going to be a short time. It's going to be a long time if you don't obey the words that are written in this book. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. And then it goes on to list these sicknesses that are here. And uh, Doc made me a list one time of all of them, and I think there's about 38 of them, uh, of sickness there. And every sickness and, and every disease can be spread out until it covers every known sickness of mankind here listed. But there is a word, uh, uh, there is a verse... Uh, uh, where is it at? Well, um, uh, but anyway, there's another verse that says that, that are not written in, in all the diseases that are not written in this book as well. So, huh? Oh, it is? 61? And oh, also, and every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. So, the Lord says that if we disobey His word, we will, we will receive the just of our reward. He says, you, the sickness of Egypt will be our portion, and uh, even those that are not written in this book will be. But we don't want that. I don't want that. And I know that none of you want that. So we need to study the Word of the Lord, understand it, apply it, hide it in our heart, learn and understand that we have authority in Jesus' name to stand against these things, and as, and as we stand against them, that they have to flee. And, 
and help our help our faith, Lord, increase our faith, so that we will see the the, the manifestation of your word in our lives and in the lives about us, and uh, that comes by believing. Help help me, Lord. I just have to keep repeating, Lord, help my unbelief and help me to believe and understand and know that I know that I know that your word is true. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, in Deuteronomy uh, 27 here, uh, now she, she taught us on curses, and so I'm going to review here uh, for a few minutes some of the curses that uh, the Lord says we're under. I'm not going to any ex explanation of them. I ha do sometimes when I teach just on curses, but that's not my, my subject today. It's just a review and then to look forward to, to uh, the, the blessing and the anointing of the Lord. But verse 15 of Deuteronomy 27 says, Cursed be the man that maketh an engraven or molten images, has another god, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands, the craftsman, and putteth in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Now, this, uh, 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 this is uh, uh, having another god before you, and uh, there are lots of gods besides making one with your hands. There's the main god of America is the god of pleasure, and along with it, the god of the occult. Uh, but uh, there are many gods uh, that uh, especially Americans have. The god of pleasure, the, the, the gods of the occult, and uh, that... Uh, uh, one of the great gods that's coming forth in the last few years is the gods uh, uh, of games, which are fine, but they become a god. Basketball, football, baseball, tennis, uh, golf, they, they have become the gods of the nation, the god of pleasure. But just to go play uh, basketball or play baseball, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a god. But when it's more important than, than church and, and it's more important than, to, to, go, to go see the game than it is to pay a bill that you owe, that's your God. That's your God. The, uh, uh, and the, the, the water sports are, to some people, are, are gods. So we have to look at what, is, what are you making a God in your life of? What, what are you? What am I making a God of? So that there, there are many areas that we can look at in relation to that. And then it says, Cursed be he that uh, holdeth in light esteem his father or his mother. Uh, the Word says that you're to honor your father and your mother. You may not agree with them. You may not uh, 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 have the best relationship. But the Scripture says you must honor your father and your mother. And then he said, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Now, in the time this was written, they put a pile of stones somewhere, uh, to mark the, the uh, area uh, that belonged to them, and somebody come along and move the pile of stones over 10 or 20 feet or something. And the Lord says you're not to do that. But also, uh, uh, it says, Cursed be he that, uh, that uh, removeth his neighbor's landmark. Uh, we can also apply that to, to misuse of the Scripture. Being taught uh, in air, the Scripture in air, you're removing your, your landmark your, your steadfastness in, in the word of the Lord by that. Then it says, Cursed be he that maketh the blind one or out of the way. Well, that's referring to, to people who are blind in their eyes, but it's also, in my opinion, referring to people who are blind to the Scripture. And if they don't hear the Scripture and, and take the blindness from their eyes, they will stay blind. If we have an opportunity to help remove that blindness, then it's our responsibility to do that, that we don't let them wander around in, uh, in, in spiritual blindness. And then it... Uh, uh, my, oh, better keep my finger here so I don't get lost. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Uh, and that uh, it refers also to, uh, to uh, uh, th those who... Uh, uh, don't have uh, what we have or something. If we can help them, we're to, we're to be a blessing. You're to help take care of those uh, that uh, do the best that you can uh, who are not as able to take care of themselves uh, be, through no reason of their own. Then verse 20 says, Cursed be he that lieth with his neighbor's wife. Uh, uh, adultery. Uh, and uh, because he's uncovered, or lieth with, with his father's wife. Uh, because he's uncovered his father's skirt. Incest. A ten-generation curse of incest, uh, or any other relative. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, bestiality. 
another ten generation curse. And there's a there's a uh, a lot of these things that are are becoming to the front and and they're uh, rampant across this nation and other nations of the earth. Verse 22 is, says, Cursed he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. Now, that little verse appears three times in the Scriptures. It appears here. It appears back in two chapters in, in Leviticus. And that little verse takes in every aspect of a family, uh, in, the way it's written. Uh, let's look at that again. It says, Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, who is the daughter of his uh, father. So, uh, you... you uh, uh, have a sister, you have a natural sister, and then your father was married before, and he brings another girl in, and so she is now your sister also. Now your mother dies, your mother died and your father remarried, and or he was married before, either way, and now then uh, your mother dies and your father marries again, maybe the third time, and this woman brings in another girl, so now you have three sisters in the family. One's your blood sister. One's your half sister. Or, or your uh, uh, no, she's not your half sister. She's a step sister. And then uh, he marries again and has another uh, daughter. And now she is your ha- half sister. So you have all these possibilities here. And God says that it, that that uh, it, that uh, it's a curse. You're not to to have relations with any near of kin. You're cursed, and it's a ten-generation curse if you do that. And we have had instance here. We had an instance here where one young man that worked here uh, had married his half-sister, and he did not know that until just a week before he married her. But he wasn't saved or anything, so they got married anyway. Uh, they had been separated and lived apart, and just by chance, uh, I don't know, it doesn't happen by chance, the devil does things, uh, 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 she came back into his life, and he was drawn to her, and they married. Of course, there were problems in the, that rose right away, and the marriage didn't last. And then we had the occasion to have a, a woman brought here from Florida who had married her cousins, first cousins, and it was a, and they were wealthy people. Both both sides of the family were wealthy, and the family adult condoned it. The family, in fact, the family on both sides uh, kind of pushed it because they wanted to keep everything in the family line. And one, and one of the, the, the daughters, the, the girl's father and mother was a Baptist preacher. And the boy's father and mother was a doctor. They were doctors. And, uh, but, it was, uh, but anyway, uh, we did the best we could to pray, to pray with her and help her to, to be set free. Of course, you can't go back and undo what's, what's done, but we pray, prayed with her and asked the Lord to for, forgive them and to set them free from the problems of life that they were having. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, verse 23 says, Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. Now we're back to incest again. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. Uh, that uh, that uh, uh, f- falls upon your neighbor and uh, smites him secretly. Uh, you're, you're cursed for it. And uh, then it says, Cursed be he that taketh a reward to slay an innocent person. Take a reward to kill somebody, uh, or even w- witch doctors take a reward to uh, to uh, pray to kill somebody. The Lord says that you're cursed for doing that, for murder. You're, that's murder. You're cursed. And then He concludes, says, "Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them." And so, if you don't, if you don't uh, uh, obey the, the law, not only that, but uh, other, we're we're cursed. Because we know to obey, and we don't, we bring a curse upon us. Well, now, across the page here in uh, my Bible, over to uh, chapter 28, uh, verse 15, I will begin to read here again. And it shall come to pass that if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you, and they'll overtake you. And cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. And cursed shall be the fruit of your body, then the fruit of your land, and the increase of your kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. 
So, if you do not obey the word of the Lord, the Lord says that all these curses will come upon you, and they will consume your entire, your family, your, your occupations, and whatever. The, these, these three uh, verses here, 16, 17, and 18, uh, conclude everything that is related to your life. All of it. So, so we need to, to obey the Word and, and hide it in our heart and not to be in rebellion. Now, I want to read uh, a couple of more. Malachi, uh, chapter 1. Malachi is just back a couple of pages from the book of Matthew. So if you can find Matthew, you'll be able to find Malachi. Just back up a page or two, and there will be Malachi. <clears throat> in Malachi, chapter 1, well, let's see. Where do I want to start? Verse 6. <clears throat> and a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, uh, uh, where is my, my fear or reverence? Uh, saith the Lord of, of hosts, or the God of armies, unto you. O priests that despise my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? By not teaching the word, by not teaching it, by saying that the virgin birth uh, didn't happen, or the blood of Jesus is not. They, they stand in the pulpit and teach that, teach these, uh, teach these things, uh, teach that, uh, that God uh, approves of homosexuality and lesbianism, that God approves of it. Uh, and they're, they're standing and teaching an abomination and a curse from the pulpit. Yeah. And here he says... Uh, uh, he says, O priest that despise my name. Any, anybody doing that, standing in the pulpit doing that, despises the name of the Lord. <clears throat> and you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offered polluted bread. Word. That's just what we're talking They offer polluted bread. The word. They twist it. It's polluted. Upon mine altar. And you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. Uh, and, and if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with you, or accept thy person? Saith the Lord of hosts, the God of armies. And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons? Saith the Lord of, of hosts. Who is there, even among you, that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. You, you don't bring things to the Lord for naught. If you do, you're cursed. If you do it just to, to, uh, to ease your conscience. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of, of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. <clears throat> for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great. Among, now, uh, uh, among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, right there I want to expound on an error in the Scriptures. That, that verse you says, it shall be great among the Gentiles. And down here it says, uh, my name shall be great among the heathen. The same word in the original that is used as translated Gentile is the same word that's translated heathen. The word Gentile is, an, is a misconception and a, a, of, the, of the Scripture, and it, has, and it has led us to a wrong understanding of who we are. I am not a Gentile. A Gentile is a heathen, uh, uh, and the word Gentile stands for the, for the word heathen, singular and plural. It stands for the word nation, singular and plural. That's what it means. It, and the word the Gentile is taken uh, and applied to you and me. I am not a heathen. I am, I, I am not a Gentile. I am not a heathen. And so that, uh, that does not apply to you and me. And every place in my Bible where I found the word Gentile, I have run a line through it, and I've crossed it out, and I've wrote in the, the right application of it. If it applies to people, then it should be heathen or heathens. If it applies to, to a nation, then it should say nation or nations. And uh, about a third of the places in the Bible, it is translated correctly. And about two-thirds of the places in the Bible, it is translated in air, and, and has caused us to be in air in the understanding of who we are. We are not 
Gentiles. Amen. We are the household of Israel. We are the overcomers. We, we are the, 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 the kingdom of the living God in the earth. Okay. But you have uh, profaned it in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even the meat, is contemptible. Yeah, you see, that's what they say about, about the, some of the preachers. Uh, they can't teach the Word. They get up and give a, a book review or, or something else that, because the Word is contemptible to them. So that they don't... Uh, and it convicts them. If they were to use it, they'd be convicted. And you said also, Behold, what a weariness it is to teach the Word of, of the Lord. And you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn and lame and sick Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this at your hand, saith the Lord? <clears throat> but cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and vileth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Now, there's the same word again. Why didn't they say Gentiles there? But heathen is correct. <clears throat> but uh, back in biblical days, and even today, uh, but back then, uh, they set aside certain animals. The Lord said not to bring one that had any defects. And they set, set aside certain animals to bring for, for the sacrifice and the offering. And then when it come time for it, they uh, thought, well, that animal's too good. And they picked one that wasn't so good and brought to the Lord. Well, the Lord says, if you do that, you're cursed. Because, because you have vowed a vow to the Lord and you haven't kept it. Uh, the same with, uh, with farming. Uh, uh, farmers have... Uh, uh, have a cattle, and they set aside a lot of Christian farmers, and they put aside a tenth of their cattle for the Lord and a tenth of their grain for the Lord, or they set aside a certain portion of the land and say that's God's portion over there. And uh, then I uh, trust that when it is uh, when it is uh, uh, harvested, that they keep their word and give God that portion that's His, even if it if it had ten bushel more to the acre, that's still God's portion. And if the cattle that you set aside for the Lord, that you gave him the best and not took the worst. If you did, then you've lost the blessing and you become, your land and your cattle become cursed by doing that. So, then it goes on. It says, Now, O you priest, this commandment is for you. That's for the ministries of today. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto the name, unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of armies, the God of victory, the God of battles, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessing. Yea, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. So the Lord says we're cursed because we do not lay to heart that which He, uh, which he has told us to, in, in His Word to do. Uh, uh, to do. Uh, let me see. Where are we going to? Uh, okay. Then uh, over here in uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse uh, uh, 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet uh, you've robbed me. But you say, When have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you've robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring, and he said, then he said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be me meat in mine house, and prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. So, give unto the Lord that portion that's his, and give extra for the willing heart, and the Lord will pour out from, from heaven, from, uh, and will open the windows of heaven unto us. Now, I want to read... In Revelations chapter uh, uh, 22, verse 18. The last chapter of the last book of the Bible. Uh, and verse 18 says, says, I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, and if any man shall add unto these word things, God shall add unto him the plagues, the curses that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So God says here that it's possible, that it's possible for your name to be taken out of the book of life. Eternal security is defu is is de is uh, 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 de uh, huh? De 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 deceptive, and and right here it tells that that your, your name can be taken out of the book of life. Well, 
if you do not obey my word, he says, uh, if you do not obey my word, then uh, uh, these things will come upon you. But I intend to obey the word of the Lord. Amen, myself. Well, now let's go back and look at the other side. We've looked at that side. Now there is another side. So, for the next uh, uh, about uh, 45 minutes, we will look at the other side. And we'll go back to Deuteronomy 28. But you see, we all have gotten ourselves under all of these things because we haven't known that God said if you do these things, we haven't been taught that, that, that these curses will come upon you and, and that we have them in our ancestor heritage. And we need to stand before the Lord and, and have these things broken off of us as we have this week. That's what has happened. This, every day this week, at least once and sometimes twice, we've had these things uh, uh, taught to us. And then we have practiced what was taught to us and to set the captives free. But in uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded you this day, saith the Lord thy God, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. <clears throat> now, that word right there could have been translated and said all the Gentiles of the earth. Because that's the same identical word. But it's above all the nations of the earth. And all these, what? Blessings shall come upon you. And they will overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed thou shalt be in the field. What was it before? It said that, uh, that the field would, would not yield, and we wouldn't be blessed in the sea. But here it says we'll be blessed in the city, and blessed in the field. And blessed shall be the fruit of the body, and blessed shall be the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of the cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and of the flock of thy sheep. And blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Why? Because we obey the word of the Lord. And not because we have to, it's because we... I want to. I want to obey the word of the Lord. Uh, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Uh, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. You know, we better search to see what we're not obeying in the word of the Lord, because, uh, because if we obey the word of the Lord, all these blessings just automatically fall upon us and become ours. So, we don't have to search for them. The Lord says they will be ours. Uh, the Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, and in all that thou settest thy hand to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee. And the, Now, Somebody say, well, that's the land of Israel. Well, that was then, but today it's right here where you live. It's where I live. It's where we're at today. <clears throat> the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. And he's still he's looking for a holy people. And if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall fear and be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And now let's look at this. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right hand or to the left, or to go after and to serve other gods, and then it shall come to pass that all these curses shall fall upon you and, and, and follow after. Huh? Now, any place he can find, there's, there's several places on the top and... Okay. But I want to back up to verse 12 and, and read the last part of that verse to you. And then I want to ask you a question. It says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, 
the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and they shall not borrow. Okay, let me ask you a question. Does that apply to, to the land of Israel, the people we call Israel? Does it apply to them? Have they lend to every nation on the face of the earth? Do they loan money to anybody? Where do they get their money from? How many billions of dollars do we give to them every year? Not just billion, billions, and have for many years. So if we're loaning to them, then they can't be God's chosen people in the earth today. It's impossible. You need to study to find out. What nation on the face of the earth has loaned to every nation on the face of the earth? America. Has, it, that's what it says. It says, you shall loan and not borrow. We have not borrowed ever from anybody, ever, ever. But we have loaned to every nation on the face of the earth, every nation. And none of them have ever repaid us. None of them have ever repaid. So, if the word be true, then America at this time is God's chosen people at this time. Now, there is one nation, there is one little nation on the face of the earth that has repaid their debt. Finland. Finland has, ever since the, 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 they were loaned, they have been faithful to repay the interest and then the debt. And no other country has even tried, even paid interest, even tried. So anyway, that's something for you to consider and to think about. Then there's another scripture in uh, uh, the New Testament that says uh, that uh, he that denies the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is Antichrist. He who denies it is Antichrist. The man that was head of Israel who was killed just a little while back was an avowed atheist. Avowed atheist. If he was an avowed atheist, then he, he was an Antichrist because he denied the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we need to think of some of these things. Now, I'm not preaching British Israel. That's not it. But let's look at the Word and rightly divide it and see who God's people are. And, uh, did you ever understand that uh, there are 13 tribes? There are 13. Do you, do you understand that there's 13 tribes? Hmm? Do you understand how there's 13? There's not 12? Does anybody not understand that, that, uh, that, that there's 13 tribes? Do I need to explain it? You don't. Okay. Uh, well, what did uh, Jacob do when, the, uh, when he was dying and he gave the blessings to, to, the, to, to the children? He divided Joseph's two sons into two individual tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. And there became 13 tribes with an equal birthright. In fact, uh, 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 Ephraim uh, received uh, the double portion. He, inced, he received uh, the inheritance of Joseph because Joseph received the double portion. Joseph was the firstborn of, of, uh, of Abraham's uh, beloved. Joseph, Joseph was the firstborn. I know he was born after Dan and the others, but, but they were born by the, uh, uh, by the concubines and by the wife that, that Abraham or, or, or Isaac uh, that didn't uh, uh, request. His request was, uh, uh, okay, help me quick. Joseph's mother, uh, huh? Uh, 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 Rachel, uh, uh, Rachel, 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 Rachel was was uh, was was Joseph's love, Rachel, and it was through her came really came the firstborn who was Joseph, and then when when uh, uh, when Jacob died, when Israel died, he he gave the birthright to Joseph. He didn't give it to Judah. He gave the birthright to Joseph. And the birthright still stands today that Joseph has the birthright. Uh, the the, the uh, uh, Savior, uh, the, the promise of, of the Savior was given to Judah. That's the promise of the Savior. But the birthright of the tribes is, it belonged to Joseph and still belongs to Joseph today. Anyway, oh, what I was saying about the 13, uh, there's 13 tribes. There, this nation was formed also with 13 colonies. One, one, in my opinion, to represent each, each of the 13 tribes. Anyway, that's, I had not, not intended to say any of that, but so, so be it, it is said.
to a reading the blessings <clears throat> that, 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 that the Lord has, has promised to those who serve Him, that we will be blessed. Okay, let's go over to uh, Michael, uh, 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 or Malachi. Let's go to Malachi, uh, back to chapter 4 of Malachi. The Lord again gives a blessing to, his, to, to the people in Malachi. The last book, book just before we come uh, on to, to the time of the New Testament, uh, the uh, t time of the uh, area here between uh, the Old Testament, what we call the Old and New Testament, it's all one book, when they were looking for the Messiah and thought he was never going to come, and then he came right on time. And he'll come again right on time. But we're, we're down to that time. We're down. <laughs> you see, there were, there were some who had been promised that they would not die until they seen the Lord's Messiah. And I believe there's some of us that will live to see the Lord's Messiah. Amen. In our physical bodies. At least I desire that. I know down through the ages there's been multitudes that have desired that. But I believe we have come to that time uh, 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 in the, the, the fulfillment of God's uh, uh, plan. Well, in uh, Malachi chapter 4, it says... For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day, uh, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of armies. And it shall leave them without, the, with them neither root nor branch. So it says that's what's going to happen to the wicked. And then it says, but unto you that fear, that reverence, that honor, my name and my word and my Son, shall the Son of Righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ, arise with healing in His wings, and He shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you, sh and you shall do what? Tread down the wicked. That's you and me. Shall tread down the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, the the God of battles, remember you, and how it? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horb for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. Now you notice it does not say ordinances, for the ordinances are the were the sacrifices and all that pertained to uh, to, to the sacrifices and and all of that. Uh, so that here he has eliminated that for, from here because he's looking forward to Jesus, who who is the fulfillment of all the ordinances, uh, and, and would not and they will not be needed anymore because he's talking about Jesus coming here, and he and so he just talks about the statutes and the judgments which still stand. And Jesus said he didn't come to do away with the law, but he came to fulfill it. Amen. So now then, uh, let's see where. Do I where uh, do I want to go? And I want to go now uh, back. I want to go to Ezekiel. Uh -uh. Ezekiel, back just a little ways to Ezekiel, just before Daniel. <clears throat> and let's look at uh, uh, who these people are that's going to uh, uh, put, put these under their feet. Uh, Ezekiel, let me see. What do I want to go? Ezekiel twenty-two. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. There, we were taught about that this week, about the clean and the unclean. Uh, uh, and uh, if you study the, the scriptures that's used by, uh, the, by our tradition... Uh, of Peter and his vision, and if you'll study what Peter had to say about it when he's brought before the Sanhedrin, you'll find that it has nothing to do with what you eat. It is, it is in reference to heathen nations. Uh, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravaging the pry, to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. 
and her prophets, ministers, have dabbed them with, with untempered mortar. That's what they do with their word. They say, that's not for today, that's for yesterday, and they, they take it all apart. They've dabbed it with, with untempered mortar. See, seeing vanity and, and divining, divining lies unto them, say, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, which the Lord hath not spoken. And the people of the land have used oppression and ex exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have, ex have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man, a champion among them, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap for, before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none." Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Well, I trust that the Lord will look at us and say that he's found somebody that will, that can, that will stand and is standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Amen. I trust that, that you will determine that you will be a person to stand in the gap and make up the hedge today. Amen. Well... Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah 51. And, uh, of course, we... 51 and... Yeah, wait a minute, 51 and verse 20. And here is what I trust that we are. Standing in the gap, making up the hedge. And verse 20 says, Thou art my battle axe, O Israel, and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Who's he talking about? He's talking about you and me, that we're the ones that, he's, that he plans to use to stand in the gap and make up the hedge and be his battle axe. Well, let's see what promises there are for these people. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. And here in Ezekiel uh, chapter 8, <coughs> uh, Verse 5, it says, Then said he unto me, Well, uh, this is the angel of the Lord that has come to Ezekiel. And he's, uh, he's talking to him. And he said, Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now to the way of the north. Now lifted up mine eyes the way towards the north. And behold, northward, at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in, in the entry. That image of jealousy was the, they were worship of Tamas. And uh, really, that's where the, where the sign of the cross comes from. It comes from the, from the worship of Tamas. And we read in another place where they made cakes to Tamas, where the, where the women made cakes. And they were sitting in the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, gate of the temple, sitting there weeping for Tamas. And you'll find that in uh, uh, other scripture. I think it's Jeremiah 7 and 30, I believe. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, uh, oh, Ezekiel 9, 14. Okay. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from, from my sanctuary and, and turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole was in the wall. It's just looking into the church. And then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, there was a door. And he said unto me, Go in. Behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw. And behold, every form of creeping thing and abominable beast and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. They were worshiping here in, in, in the temple. And uh, uh, there were 70 of them, uh, of, ancient, of the ancient men there, worshiping these, these heathen idols and images. And then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chamber of his energy. Now, this is in your mind. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. And he said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see even greater abominations that they do. 
And then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was, be, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for tomorrow's. There, there, there it is right there. And then said he unto me, as, uh, Tomaz is the grandson or the son of Nimrod. Tomaz was the son of Nimrod. And he was supposed to have been killed and been raised from the dead. And, uh, and he was worshipped uh, in, in uh, uh, Babylon and worshipped uh, in uh, the city of Nimrod uh, and, uh, <coughs> as God. And he was also worshipped. Uh, his mother was worshipped as, as, the, uh, as the, 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 the mother of heaven. This is where the Queen Mother of Heaven came from. Uh, Tamaz's mother was, was worshipped as the Queen of Heaven, and he was worshipped as the, as the child, uh, uh, Tamaz was. And that c- carried on from Nimrod down field yet to today. <clears throat> then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see even a greater abomination than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple. They, they weren't facing the temple of the Lord. And their faces were toward the east. And they worshipped the sun towards the east. They were worshipping uh, uh, the, uh, the, the planets and the, and the sun. Uh, uh, they were the uh, same as horoscope today. Then he said unto, unto me, Hast thou not seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing in the house of Judah that they commit this abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they even put the branch to their nose. That was a little piece of evergreen like they put up to their nose like this, uh, worshiping Satan. And uh, that's carried through today uh, in uh, a gesture that is made even today. Uh, Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Now, I've just read a description of America there. It's just what I've read. And so God says that, that his judgment has to come on the land. Now let's go on and see what we find in the midst of, these, of, of all of this. <clears throat> and, and he cried also in mine ear with a loud voice, the angel did saying, Cause them that have charge over the city, over the church, to draw near every man with his, with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men, six, 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 the number of man, six men, uh, came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north. And every man had a slaughter weapon in his hand. But one man among them was clothed with linen. Hallelujah. With a writer's inkhorn by sign, and they went in, into the temple, and stood before the brazen altar. The brazen altar stands for the place of judgment. They went in and stood at the place of judgment. And the glory of the God of Israel went up from the cherub whereon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, the church, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men, the women, the boys, and the girls that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So we've been taught by tradition to fear the mark of the beast. But we've never been taught to fear the mark of God, to fear that we don't have the mark of God. We need to forget about the mark of the beast, and we be, be, need to begin to desire and to fear that we don't have the mark of God on our forehead. That's what we need to, to, to have fear of. A righteous fear. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, Go you after him, to, to the six who had the, their, the swords, uh, and smite, let not your ear spare, neither have pity. The judgment of God on the earth is coming. And he says, Slay utterly old and young, maid and little children and women, but come not near any man, woman, or boy or girl, upon whom is the mark. So there's your protection in the time of tribulation, to be an, to, 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 uh, be an intercessor. He said, <clears throat> he said to, set, to, to go through and set the mark upon the men and the women that cry for the abominations that's in the land. The intercessors that sigh, that sigh and cry for the abominations. And then he, <clears throat> then he said, to begin at the sanctuary, at the church. And then they begin at, with the ancient men, with, with the elders which were before the other. This isn't the world. This is the church we're talking about here. 
This is not the judgment on the, on the world yet. This is judgment on the church. And he said unto them, Defile the house, fill the courts with the slain. Go forth. And they went forth and slew in the city, in the church. <clears throat> and it came to pass while they were slaying them that, that I was left. And I fell upon my face and cried and said, Our Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon, upon Jerusalem, on the church? And then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, <clears throat> the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by said, reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have commanded me. Now, there's another little phrase there I'm going to throw at you for a minute, and then, and then go on. It says, it says, verse 9 said, And he said unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and the house of Judah is exceeding great. Evidently, there's two different lots, lots of people here. But that, for here, he, he, he designates that Israel and Judah are different. And so, uh, uh, I'll leave that lay there, and we'll go on. Uh, but I want to uh, uh, turn to uh, 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 Revelations uh, chapter 2. To Revelations chapter 2. Now here, we have seen God's marked people. We've seen the intercessor. We've seen God's people that are marked, that, that, that are escape that the, the, the tribulation as far as the judgment of that time. Now, that doesn't mean that tribulation comes just as in other nations of the earth in China that we'll not die for, for, our, our, uh, for our faith. We stand up. We may, we may be uh, uh, martyrs just uh, uh, as uh, the martyrs of old uh, in, in the days that lie ahead of us. But God says that, that he's, he's, he's with us. He'll not leave us nor forsake us. But here in Revelation uh, chapter uh, 2, I want to read to you. Uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 7. And, he's, uh, and this is, is to the different church, churches, the church ages, or, and the churches of today. And out of these churches there comes a people. Verse 7 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, the intercessor now becomes the overcomer to those who overcome. And God says to, to the overcomer that he will do what? And these overcomers are the marked ones. They're the ones that are marked with God's, uh, with God's mark, mark. And uh, also we can turn in, chap in chapter 4 of Revelation again. I believe it also tells us there that uh, not to hurt the, the such and such until the, the, uh, God's people are marked. But here he says that uh, to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And Jesus is that tree of life, and, and uh, He's given it to us. But in the uh, but in uh, the Garden of Eden, there was also the tree of life, which was given. And now here to the overcomer, God is giving that tree of life uh, to those who are overcomers that Adam and Eve could have partaken of, but didn't. And then uh, in uh, uh, verse 11, we have uh, another uh, uh, here. And he says, To he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He that, to him that overcometh, we are promised eternal life. No, no second death here is promised to the overcomer. And then uh, in verse 17, we find number 3. Uh, it's, and it says, To him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone there will be a, a, name, a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that, that receiveth it. So he says here that he'll give you a hidden manna to eat, that which, which uh, is the Lord Jesus. Uh, and then he says that he'll give us a white stone, which is a new name written. Now, uh, here a while back, I heard an explanation of that stone, uh, and uh, when uh, in the in the day, in Jesus' time in the Roman rule, when you were tried for something that was a penalty of death, 
and you were tried for it, and you were found not guilty, the judge gave you a stone, a little, a little stone that you carried with you that was written in it uh, uh, that you were not guilty of, of this of the crime. And here the Lord says he's going to give us an, uh, a stone uh, with a new name written in it. So he's declaring by giving of this stone that we're not guilty of our trespasses and our sins, that they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, and, and, and we n- n- to be remembered no more. And this stone is given to us as a verification that we are no longer guilt- guilty of our sins and abominations that we've committed against the Lord because we've come and repented and asked, through the blood of Jesus, and 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 here we are we are given this stone to acknowledge that, because if in those days if this man was brought or woman was brought again to trial, all they had to do was present this stone, and it, and it said it meant not guilty, and so through the Lord Jesus we come not guilty. Number four, we find in verse uh, twenty-six, it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To, to him will I give power over the nations. So, uh, we are saved by grace. Salvation is free. The Holy Spirit's free. Healing through the, uh, through, uh, the scars and stripes of Jesus is free. But then, if we're going to come uh, and serve the Lord, we're going to have to, uh, to have a little a labor to do it. And he says, uh, to those that, that, that keep his works and do his works, that labor for him, he will make you ruler over the nations. Give power over the nations. Now, everybody's not going to have that power. Every, there's the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. And there's the multitudes without that uh, don't care. I've got salvation. I don't want anything else. They're not going to rule and reign with Jesus. They, they think they are. Most of them think they are, but they're not. They will not rule and reign with Jesus. The overcomers are those who will rule and reign with Jesus. <clears throat> It says here that, that you'll have power over the nation. Then we go over to chapter 3 of Revelations. And verse 5 of chapter 3 says, And he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. In white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So here he says that we're going to have white raiment represent holiness and righteousness, a people that's righteous and holy before the Lord. And then he says that your name won't be blotted out. Just as I read in in Revelations, here I read again in this chapter uh, that eternal security uh, is a false doctrine and a false teaching because your name can be blotted out. If it couldn't be, he wouldn't say so. But he does say also that he's married to the backslider. So be quick repenters. Repent quick so that your name will stay in the book of life and be an overcomer. Uh, Number six, uh, the sixth uh, is in verse 12. And here he says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. What's the overcomer going to be? The overcomer is going to be the pillars in the house of the Lord. In the temple of the Lord, the pillars that hold the temple together will be the overcomers. The rest of the temple will be, it'll all be built up of living stones. This city, this city four square coming down out of heaven is the city, uh, uh, at the temple of the living God made up of living stones of you and me. But, but those who hold the temple together will be the overcomers. They will be the, the, uh, the, the pillars of the temple. Amen. <clears throat> and, he says that he, he will confess, confess us before his Father, and he will write upon us a new name. Uh, amen. And that was, was number six. Number seven, in verse 21, it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my Father in his throne. The purpose. What is the purpose of the camp meeting? Why are we laboring? Why are we... To teaching the kingdom and deliverance and about curses so that we can rule and reign with Jesus, so that we'll be, be the overcomers that will be a, granted the right to sit with, in the throne with the Lord Jesus. You know, that is a, that is beyond your imagination to, to be allotted the right to sit in the throne with Jesus. An equal, that makes you, an, makes you and me an equal heir with him. To sit, but that's only to the overcomers. 
So we have a great responsibility on our life to serve the Lord and also for our own to, to become and be those overcomers uh, for, the, the, for, the Lord, is for the Lord Jesus. And then we will be granted the right to rule and reign with him, to sit with him in his throne and rule and reign with him. But then over in Revelation uh, 21, we find here that there is yet another eight complete completion. An eighth promise to the overcomer. And it says, well, let's read here a little bit. Uh, and I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. That's, that's, that's the living stones are coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, to be remembered no more. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is the first of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son and daughter. Not only inherit, sit, sit with Jesus in his throne, but we will be called God's son and God's daughter. What an honor. It's beyond my imagination to comprehend what I have read. I cannot explain, I cannot comprehend what... what, what is said here and what I have read. Except, Lord, help me to do my part to be, to be an overcomer, that I'll be counted worthy to be called a son of the living. Talk about sonship. People talk about sonship. Here is sonship in its fullness. You shall be my son and my daughter. So, so here is, is sonship. And it's to him that overcomer that this, that this shall be so. Well, Let's see. But verse 8 says, But the fearful, the unbeliever, the abominable, the murderer, the whoremonger, the sorcerer, the adulterer, the liars, shall what? Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, the blessings, the blessings are on, on to those who, who serve and walk after and keep and, the, the word of the Lord. But then the curse is unto all those who do not and will not hear the word of the Lord. It, the, the curse falls upon them. And they shall have their part in the, in the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And in <clears throat> Revelation 22, it says, verse 10, And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. If it was at hand then, I mean it is here now. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. You've got to quit worrying about it. you just got to, it's got to be. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall it be. So, if we want something in the kingdom... We have to work and labor for it. For the, the kingdom, the salvation is free. But if we want rewards in the kingdom, then I am responsible to work for the, for the Lord. For, it shall, for the reward shall be given to every man according as he has labored for the kingdom. One talent, three talents, five talents, whatever your talents are, you are to use it for the kingdom with all your ability, and God will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then he says, I am Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do my commandments, <clears throat> that they may have right to the tree of life. That's the first, that's the first uh, promise to the overcomer, the tree of life, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into or be part of that city, the New Jerusalem. For again, and then he says, For without are the dogs and the sorcerers and the warmongers and the murderers and the adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh and maketh 
a lie. Uh, well, let us go back to, Revel, to Deuteronomy 30. We're coming back two more scriptures, and we will conclude this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey and serve him, his, and obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers, uh, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give unto them. Revelations chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made uh, 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 us a kingdom of priests unto God. I'm going to start over. Oh, I see. And, uh, and through Jesus Christ, beginning at verse 1. And Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of this earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, I thank you, Lord, in his own blood, and hath made uh, us a kingdom of priests unto God and his Father, to whom be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So he's washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he's making us to be a kingdom of priests unto the Lord, unto, unto our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that is what I see out of our week of ministry this week, that we are being set free from the curses to receive the blessings of the Lord as we walk before him and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen and amen. Well, Father, I thank you today for the privilege of, of, of having all those that have been with us this week and those that have ministered. I thank you, Father. May we hide these, these words in our hearts may, may, that we will walk before you in holiness and righteousness and be a people of righteousness worthy to walk in robes of white. I thank you for it. For, Father, I declare unto Satan that I will, we will, Walk in robes of white, Satan. We will declare the, the works of the Lord. We will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. We will declare that He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We will declare that there's no other God name given under heaven whereby men may be saved except through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will declare that He's Lord of lords and King of kings, that He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the fairest of ten thousand, and that He's the door, He's the rock, He's the bread of life. And Father, I thank You for that privilege of declaring and acknowledging that Jesus is Lord. And I give You praise. And Father, I thank You for the privilege we've had this week of hearing Your Word and of sitting in Your presence. And I praise you for it. Thank you for watching over all here that are traveling and leaving to us today and tomorrow. Bring them back in the days ahead. Bring back those that have gone uh, to another s s meeting. And I give you praise for it. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.